Hey, Brian here with you today, coming from the inside of my man cave where I'm staying out of the heat and humidity here in Houston. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you about location mission planning for drone sites using Google Earth and Google Maps. Uh, both of these apps have been around for a pretty good while. Uh, in relation to drones, though, there are some interesting tips and tools to be found using these apps. Um, and yeah, I know the usefulness of similar apps such as Kitty Hawk, Air Map, UVA Forecast, and a bunch of others. These are all good and useful, and especially while you're out in the field. What I'm really trying to show here is that there's a way to get a better idea of where to fly your drone in a place maybe where you've never been or are not too familiar with before you head outside for, the, for a day of flying. Um, Google Earth is a free download. It does work best on a regular Windows P PC or a Chrome PC. It will work on Apple devices, but it does not have a lot of the functionality that I'm going to talk about. Um, Apple does have its own map apps. I'm just not covering them here today. Um, Google Maps is also a free download. Uh, thousands use it every day to navigate their way around town and past traffic tie-ups, uh, but it is also useful for mission planning. And I'll show you here in just a minute. Okay, so right now I've got open on my screen Google Maps, uh, showing an overall picture of Houston. And I've been working on a uh, project downtown along Buffalo Bayou. And I'm not as familiar with downtown as I, I would be if I worked there or lived there. So what this does though, the green areas kind of show parks where I know that I have uh, the ability to fly my drone from without disturbing too much of the public. Uh, a lot of the work that I did here was done on a Saturday or Sunday morning, so there was really next to no one down there, so it, it was good that way. Uh, but as you can see, um, the, part, the shaded areas in green are, like I said, that are some of the local parks that you have access to that give you really good shots of uh, of downtown. And right now I'm going to switch to uh, Google Earth and this is how it usually starts up. It has its own little setup. Uh, there's a great shot of my house. But anyway, uh, working downtown, so that's where I'm going to head right now is downtown. And what I'm going to do is zoom in on the same area that I was showing on Google Maps so that uh, get an idea of what I'm fixing to try to show you here. Okay, now this is the area that I showed on Google Maps near downtown. Um, you don't really see, I don't have highlighted the parks or the green areas on Google Earth because I'm trying to do something a little bit different here as I'll show you here in just a second as soon as I orient this thing to where it kind of lines up with Google Maps. So, yeah, this is at the intersection of Interstate 45 and Interstate 10. Anyway, what, I, what this is here is the ruler tool and this thing is pretty handy. Uh, for a lot of reasons, which I'll show you here in just a second. What it can do is help you kind of plot out where you're going to go and the distances uh, between each point R. So that way, when you're flying your drone, you know, knowing the limitations of your drone, it kind of gives you an idea of uh, how far from point to point is. If you notice, each time I add a line, the uh, footage up here in the box on the ruler keeps going up. And uh, you can kind of do these one at a time so as to get an idea of the distance between each point. And what I've done is uh, coming back to Google Maps now, and like I said, I'm showing some of the parks that I uh, was able to launch from. You know, the Harris County Jail is not a place where you can fly a drone around, so I had to improvise with other cameras. You know, that was a little interesting. But for the most part it was a pretty drone friendly area. 
And then there's some helicopter landing pads on the skyscraper rooftops, but uh, nothing that really keeps you from, from flying anywhere. What I'm zooming in on here is the Buffalo Bayou Canoe Lodge and these concrete silos uh, just to the right of that. And uh, this was a very good area for me to for me to drone from, as I'll show you here in a minute. What I like to do though is kind of zoom in on this. And what I can say is, like I said, this is the area. What I'm doing right now is going into uh, street view mode. So I've never been here before, and I didn't know what was really around. There's the silos. I don't know what the historic significance of those, but they they say they're going to leave them in place. So whatever. But anyway. Um, yeah, just to the right of those silos is where I launched my uh, drone from. I'm out of two. And from there, I was able to fly a good uh, half mile towards downtown and get some really good shots. Uh, going back to, uh, the, or coming out of Street View, rather, on Google Earth, uh, I'll show you something else here in just a second. I've zoomed over to a little bit closer to James Butte Park near downtown. And I'm going to do another extended or uh, street view view from this because this this site was, as you can see, it's kind of under construction, so I wasn't sure what I was getting into. And as you can see from the street view uh, image, uh, there was some construction going on. They're building a bridge over here across the bayou, so I wasn't sure about how parking was going to be down here. And uh, the day that I did do my business here, as you can see, there's some barrels right there. I just got to park behind those barrels and I was there on site for maybe 20 minutes and uh, everything went well. Uh, got some pretty good video. Uh, so yeah, just a little piece of it here. Like I said, this is just another example of uh, the street view in Google Earth. So real quick, let's go down here to Galveston and uh, this, is, this is one of my favorite areas to, to fly a drone around in. There's lots of places in Galveston you can fly in, and Pelican Island and Seawolf Park, which I'm zooming in on here in just a second, is probably one of the best. Uh, right there in the middle of the ship channel that line runs through, it's where a lot of the cruise ships head out and come in from. And at the top of the screen, you'll see always see a lot of tanker traffic and whatnot. But uh, what I'd like to show you here is with the ruler tool again, um, how you can map your distances from point A to point B and kind of get an idea of where things stand, you know, as to how far you'll be flying your drone out. Uh, this right here is showing to the middle of the channel, 831 feet, which is about where the cruise ships are when they go right by you when you're standing on the edge of that uh, area right there at uh, Seawolf Park. Um, it's another thing, like I said, it shows it in feet. You can save these too, so that you kind of have an idea of where you were. Uh, what I like to do is go back and, and do several points. Um, for instance, like where I'm showing now, this is where I'll usually start filming the cruise ships. And I'll, you know, so I get an idea of footage wise how far away I'm going to be. And then I'll fly sideways with them to get the best views I can. And, uh, now this, this line that I'm going to draw here is as the cruise ship is making its right turn and exiting the channel headed for the open waters of, of uh, the Gulf of Mexico. So like I said, what this does, like it gives you an idea of your footages and how far your drone will be flying. Uh, it's just always good to kind of know how far out you're going to be so it's, it kind of calms the nerves a little bit. One of the other things that you can do too is uh, use the uh, circle part of this tool, circle tab. And what this will do is give you an overall idea of the footage of the, of the entire area that you'll be flying in as a circle radius. And like in this case, I just zoomed it out to 1938 feet. So that's basically across the other side of the channel and it's almost touching a marine uh, weather station right there, which has a bunch of radar dishes that have tended to give me a little bit of interference. Like I said, all these things you can save and kind of refer back to when you need to. You can name these also, so I just put circle 1938 feet. Um, but just gives you an idea of what you can do 
when you're trying to track your footage. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm an expert by any means on, on uh, these two apps, Google Earth and Google Maps. Uh, but I have played with them for years. They're, they're kind of fun to mess around with. I mean, there's a lot more than what I just showed you that you can actually do with them. Um, you know, if, for instance, if you're planning a vacation, and I mean, not just here in the United States, but anywhere in the world, you can use those same features to zero in on, on where you might want to go visit. Uh, generally, if there's a yellow line anywhere on the map, that usually indicates that there's a street view of that area. So, you know, if you want to go to, I don't know, um, Paris or London or anywhere, you know, just anywhere in the world, really, the Philippines, you can do a street view of, of where you might be vacationing, you know. It'll just give you an idea of, of the area that you're going to be in or plan to be in. Um, another thing that I like to do is uh, every now and again it kind of lets me check up on the old neighborhood you know to see how things have changed over the years and boy have they changed but uh i do appreciate your time i do appreciate you watching this video and uh give it a like if you like it and let me know let me know something down in the comments i mean like i said i don't know everything about this app and there's probably some features that even i haven't found yet so Give me a comment, let me know. Thanks.